Hey guys, it's Brandon Miniman from Pocketnow.com, and this is the software review of the HTC Inspire 4G on AT&T. Let's get to it. So again, as we've been talking about, the big story with the Inspire 4G on AT&T is the HSPA Plus data speeds that it can achieve. We're going to film another video talking more in depth about this, showing you benchmarks we've run, talking about whether this really improves the experience. Uh, so look out for that, but in this video we're going to dive into the Sense 2.0 interface. We're going to benchmark this, we're going to show you how it performs uh, on the web and lots of other stuff that you want to see. So without further ado, let's get to it. So turn it on here and what we've got, of course, let's zoom in on the screen, is HTC Sense. Some people love this, some people hate this. The people that love it like the eye candy, the visual appeal. They like how Sense shows up in your email, your call log, your photo gallery, it's everywhere. And the people that don't like it think it's a little bit too heavy, a little bit too intrusive, and you really can't turn it off. Sure, you could install Launcher Pro or ADW Launcher and get a new home screen interface, but the Sense interface goes into many, many programs, as I just mentioned. Uh, so, for better or for worse, Sense has been updated uh, for this new version uh, 2.0, even a little bit above and beyond what we saw on the Desire HD. So of course we've got seven home screens to choose from. I've got it kind of very minimally uh, populated with just three widgets, but we're gonna go through a lot more than that. We've got the leap feature so we can zoom out to see all of our home screens. You still can't subtract home screens, which is very silly because I'm gonna guess that a lot of people aren't using seven home screens. They're using maybe three or maybe four or five, but not seven. Uh, so let's talk about what we have here. Um, of course, we have the new way to arrange the widgets, and that is by pressing the button down here. And we have this new customization menu. It's a really cool feature that they've brought forward here in the new version of Sense. We can change the scene, which of course is pre-configured widgets. So you can have a scene for the weekend, shows you your Twitter feed and some other apps, maybe your gallery. And then you have a scene just for the weekday, maybe your schedule, uh, maybe the UPS application, who knows what, what you want to keep an eye on. We've got wallpaper and also skins. So let's go through some of these. If we go to wallpaper, we can choose HTC wallpaper and we get this cool looking gallery that lets you flip through kind of in this cover flow like design the various different things, uh, the various different wallpapers that come on the HTC Inspire. Now, as is the case with a lot of these enhancements, you can press Get More and you could link up to the HTC Hub to get more stuff from HTCSense.com. We'll talk about that soon. If we dive into Scene, you can kind of see these different scenes. HTC Scene, uh, Social Scene brings Twitter right up front, things like that. And lastly, if we go to Skin, I've actually added this one on the left. It's called Memories. It's pretty cool. It comes from uh, the HTC Hub. But beyond that, we've got the regular HTC skin. We've got the metal skin. So if you don't like the way that HTC Sense looks, you can at least change it out a little bit. So let me show you what this looks like. This one's kind of cool. It really changes a lot about what you're dealing with here. So you get a new background, you get a new buttons, and you're going to see in a second if we go into a stock application like the photo gallery, you're going to see that even that has been sort of redesigned with this new skin in place. So over here in gallery. So look, down here you've got kind of an orange strip instead of the black strip that you got with the HTC skin. So let's go back to this menu here and we're just going to change it back because it's a little bit too busy for the sake of a, a demonstration video here. So we're going to jump back into the stock HTC skin. And here it is. So let's go back into the personalization menu. And of course we went through these three things. And now we have widgets up here that we can go through. Here's a cool new feature and this was seen in the Desire HD. You can browse through all of the HTC widgets with this one screen. This is a little bit cumbersome. You've got 71 widgets to scroll through. They should have a thumbnail view of this and hopefully in the next version of Sense they do that. And we can go back to the previous screen. Of course we can add a wide variety of widgets. A lot of which you've seen before. Now if you go to get more HTC widgets, we'll see some widgets that you may have not have seen before. And this is coming from HTC Hub. And the first time you use HTC Hub, you have to sign up, it's free. And it should be loading, let's see what we get here. And what we get here is four extra widgets that you don't get stock on the device. Dice, which really is just a simple pair of dice that can animate. Fortune cookie, shows you your fortune, translator, and word of the day. So kind of cool that HTC gives you some extra widgets. Would be nice to see even more. So let's go back again. 
We can add an app shortcut. We could add a shortcut to a specific feature, like a direct dial or a bookmark. Uh, we can add a link to a folder. Then we can personalize all this stuff down here, all from within this screen. Let's actually add the word of the day widget, because you might not have seen that before. We can scroll all the way down. And here it is, word of the day. And there's only one design here. So we press select, and it loads. And pretty cool. So every day you can check out um, the, the word of the day. Now, something that is kind of annoying about HTC Sense is he still can't resize widgets. You know, if you go to Launcher Pro and you pay for the premium version, which is 3 bucks, you can resize widgets. So for example, I could go to my favorites uh, widget here and resize it to only take up this much space or this much space. But with the HTC Sense widgets, you really don't get that much flexibility. What you see is what you get. Fortunately, they do provide different versions of the widgets. So of course, if we go into widgets here and go to bookmarks, you have you know two options. But whoop de do both of them take up the entire screen. How about something in between that takes up a smaller size? Anyhow, so you get a choice of lots and lots of beautiful HTC widgets, as you would expect with HTC Sense. Now let's jump right into benchmarks. We want to benchmark this device and kind of give you some context here about the speed that we're talking about. So we're going to run Quadrant Standard here, and we're going to run the full benchmark, and I'll be back in a sec with the score. And we're done. Let's see what we get. Wow. Uh -huh. Let me show you a little bit closer here. We've got about 1,700 on Quadrant, which is pretty remarkable. Even the Nexus S running Android 2.3 does around uh, 1600, which is, of course, faster still than the Nexus One running Froyo. But this is a fast device, according to Quadrant. And in real-world testing, we've got to say that this is a snappy device, which is strange because it's running, you know, uh, a Qualcomm 1 gigahertz Snapdragon processor. It's not dual core. It's not even Android 2.3. It's 2.2. But hey, it's pretty darn fast. Speaking of which, let's dump into web browsing and talk about sort of the browsing speed. You can get a sense for the performance of this device. We'll load Pocket now here. Of course, we're over Wi-Fi. We're going to scroll down for the desktop version so we can load up all the graphics and all the other stuff that tend to make the device slow down a little bit. While that's loading, I can show you something else here. If we go to Windows, um, we have this sort of 3D tab viewer, sort of tabs, really Windows. So then if we go back to Windows, we can flip through between the two. A little bit heavy there. Uh, you know, HTC could have gone with something more simple than that, maybe some tabs along the top, but they kind of like to do things fancily. So let's go into landscape and we can see what it's like to browse around on the page. I've got plugins uh, required to ask to work. So that's why you see those little icons there. But of course, you will be able to see flash content. Scrolling and panning is very smooth with the 4.3 inch Super LCD display. Browsing the web is a joy. So if we zoom in, we've got actually a flash video within this link. So we'll be able to demonstrate that. Very fast performance. As you can see, it's loading the page quite rapidly. You can scroll down a little bit and we're going to see this element. So I'm going to tap on it so that it will load and let's see what happens. There it is, a video. We can press play. It'll play here, or we can have it open in the YouTube application for a little bit uh, more control over it. And here we go, it's loading. And we should be able to tap and hold on this and go full screen. So there we go, YouTube player. Let's stop it. So very good performance on the web. As you can see, let's test screen rotation speed. Pretty fast, and we've got a lot of flash elements on the page, so we can't expect it to be perfect. But it's going pretty quickly there. So quite capable web browsing here on the Inspire 4G. Let's go back to the home screen and go into the applications to see what apps we have here. We do have some unique entries. We've got the AT&T stuff, of course, family map, so you can locate where family members are on a map if they're using a similar program. We've got AT&T code scanner. There's a lot of AT&T stuff here. Uh, so I agree to the terms and conditions. And what this will let you do is presumably scan barcodes and get pricing information on certain objects. Of course, they have Google Goggles and Amazon Barcode Scanner to do the same thing. We've got AT&T Navigator if you want to get around. There's a monthly fee associated with that. Blockbuster comes on the device. Of course, you can also get that in the Android market. Connected Media is for the DLNA support. Now, of course, with DLNA, 
hard to say, DLNA, you can be looking at multimedia on your phone and sort of flick it off to your TV so you can have uh, you know, a big TV to share multimedia. Now your TV has to support DLNA or you can get the little HTC uh, media extender, which is relatively inexpensive, but as far as we can tell, a lot of people aren't using DLNA right now. And tell us in the comments if we're wrong, but it requires you to have a supported television or other device. Uh, and a lot of people just don't have a TV that has DLNA yet because, you know, most people buy TV every 10 years and not every two or three years. So let's move along here. Um, so we've got other stuff that I want to talk about. HTC Hub is very interesting and it's kind of a way to extend your HTC experience. Should mention that you can hook up with HTCSense.com to be able to remotely wipe your phone, track it on a map, ring it if you get it lost in a couch cushion, and do a lot of other cool stuff with it. Oddly, HTCSense.com has lost a lot of functionality since it came to USA customers. Very strange, don't really understand why that is. What we can do here is see apps and plugins, which are applications that HTC particularly likes. And here we go, it finally loaded. So here are the apps that HTC recommends. This is called Media Link, which will work with their little Media Hub-like device that I mentioned earlier, which you can buy to, to make your TV or any TV uh, DLNA compatible. Over to the right, we have Picasa Web Album, which I installed because I use Picasa Web Album. I wanted to sync up the photos I had in the cloud. Over here on the right, we have a plugin that adds LinkedIn to another panel of your people. Uh, program here that has lots of HTC Sense features, so you can add those all for free, which is quite nice. So let's go back to a previous screen. It says new category available. That was weird. Let's see what the new category is. Let's see if you can recognize a new category. I really can't see the new category, but uh, real quick, we'll just show you what this is. Downloads, and you can see I've downloaded the Memories skin, 4 megabytes, Picasso Web Albums, and of course the Word of the Day widget. So back over here in HTC Hub, we've got another thing called HTC Likes, and we saw this on the Desire HD. This is really cool. This is basically an application recommendation tool that links into the Android market. So you're probably wondering, if you're new to Android, there's 100,000 apps out there, which one do I download? Well, this helps you a little bit by showing you some of the really cool popular uh, HTC uh, this one's cool. Call mom. Remind yourself to call someone from your contact. Uh, shows you what HTC recommends. And you can go through the categories to most popular apps. Angry Birds is right at the top. We've got friends comments so you can link up, have, kind of have a social feature there. My downloads. And over to the right is marked items. So just quickly showing you what happens when you actually tap on one of these things. Let's go to Angry Birds. I haven't yet downloaded Angry Birds on here. And of course, that's a necessity for every device. So if we click install, we are going to be dumped into the Android market. And boom, boom, it's going to be installed just like that. So let's bounce back into the application list again. So you can see what else we have here. So a lot of the, the built-in Google stuff, like Google Maps, we've got Live TV, which is just another service AT&T uh, that you can pay for. It's using Mobi TV, so you can actually watch Live TV. And here it's going to show you um, the application in the marketplace, and you can use a trial. And then after that, you can pay if you like it. So let's go back to the program list once again. We've got HTC News, HTC News and Weather. There's the people, I guess hub you could call it. And from here, you've got the HTC Sense interface. You can swipe to the right. You can see call history. You can see online directories and all of your contacts right within the screen, which is quite nice. Scrolling down a little bit more, we've got a reader application. So if you want to uh, download books, ebooks, of course you can also load the Barnes & Noble Nook application, you can load the Kindle application, and Android, there's a lot of ways to get ebooks. Google is, or HTC is giving you another. So a really cool 3D looking way to browse through books and no landscape interface, unfortunately. If we click the little shopping cart, we're taken into the Kobo bookstore. So HTC is hooking up here with Kobo, so you can download books right onto your device and utilize this pretty cool e-reader uh, hub, which there's also a widget for, by the way, which is quite nice. Scrolling down a little bit more, let's see what else we get on here that I didn't add. Transfer data allows you to bring forth data from your SIM card. And Wi-Fi hotspot is something else. Really cool use for this phone because it can do these fast data speeds is to use it as a portable hotspot. So if you're traveling in a car or you need some Wi-Fi somewhere at a coffee shop, you can use this to, 
to beam your HSPA Plus connection to multiple devices. We've got the same portable hotspot application that you've seen on multiple HTC devices. Something else I want to talk about is on-screen keyboards. We've got some uniqueness here. So I'm going to go into uh, a new message. I'm going to actually just go into the text messaging application here. And I'm going to go on Compose Message. Now we've got three keyboard choices here, which is great because HTC for a while phased out two of their keyboards in favor for just this one you see here. And then they brought back the, the QWERTY keyboard, the kind of sure type QWERTY keyboard, and also the T9 style keyboard. So here we have the regular QWERTY keyboard. Screen sensitivity on here is fantastic. So this is a test of the keyboard. And I'm not even really looking, but the T9 is fantastic. Now I want to Go into settings real quick, and you're going to see what I mean by the different keyboard choices. So language and keyboard. We'll go over here. Keyboard types. Let's go to phone keypad. And we'll go back into that draft. So tap and hold. By the way, another way to multitask here on the Inspire, H, or Inspire 4D is to swipe down from the top, and you get into the multitasking list up here. Kind of cool. OK, and now we have the T9 style pad, which is kind of cool if you're used to using a T9 pad. So let's do, hey, this is a test. I'm not as practiced with this as I am with the other ones. Hey, this is a test. So a lot less finger travel with this one than with the full QWERTY keyboard. Finally, let me show you the other keyboard, the final one. And then we're going to end up the video by going into more detail in the settings. Touch input, and let's change it to compact QWERTY, you know, also known as sure type or what have you. And this one just groups together the letters sort of in two keys, which is nice because, you again, less finger travel. Uh, but it's sometimes annoying because you have to, if you're trying to spell a unique word that's not in the dictionary, you've got to take your time. So I'm going to say this is a test. So very good prediction, as you can see there. This is a test. Works very well. Or, of course, you can just speak to the device and say, this is a test of the keyboard. Bam. It's amazing how, how far voice recognition has come. So finally, to conclude this video, I know it's getting long. There's just so much to show you. I want to jump into the settings and take a look at what we have there. Because, of course, HTC kind of does their own thing in settings. So we have a new entry here, personalized, which you've seen before. You can access this from the home screen. We'll go back. Nothing new in wireless network or some of this stuff. Here in display, I've turned off all the window animations. Something that HTC has done is made the system font smaller which is nice because you fit more on the screen at one time. If you go into email, you get lots of emails. It's really taking advantage of the resolution here. Um, I've got, here's the settings for the LED notification that we alluded to in the hardware review. So you can specify when this little green light blinks, a great feature to have on a smartphone because you don't always have to turn on your phone to check if you've got a new SMS or if you're waiting for a call. So here are the, the different things that you can check off. Scrolling down a little bit, let's see what else we can take a look at here that is unique. Um, that's not really unique. We've got Power Saver, which is unique. It's unique to HTC devices. What it does is smartly, it manages your power very conservatively when your battery gets below a certain point. So turn Battery Saver on, and you set the percentage at which it kicks in. So say I get to 10% battery power, I get a notification, kind of like telling a story here. And then from there, it's going to do all these things. It's going to disable background data, disable Wi-Fi, disable Bluetooth, turn down screen brightness to a certain setting, turn off the screen after a certain amount of things, disable screen animation, disable vibration feedback. Really smart feature because when you're down to like 15% battery life, you're probably worrying that in a minute you're not going to be able to make a phone call, or at least on your HTC Inspire 4G, your phone's going to be managing the power and turning off everything that's not necessary except, of course, the phone. And scrolling down a little bit more, nothing much different down here. Uh, AT&T Software Update is a new entry. Kind of they rolled the HTC Software Update and the AT&T Update into the same screen. And about phone, we went through this previously. So if we go to network, we, says, we see it says HSDPA, not HSPA, although we have the HSPA plus indicator. Sort of strange that it's showing that. And of course, if we go to software information, we can see that we are running Android 2.2.1. This phone, if we were betting people, we'd say is likely to get an upgrade to Gingerbread eventually. And of course, if you don't want to wait, there will be uh, plenty of Gingerbread builds available on XD developers once they root this phone.
And one more thing to talk about, the camera application. Look how fast it opens. One, two, two seconds. On a lot of other Android phones, you're talking about three or four seconds, which may not be that long in terms of sheer seconds, but when you're trying to take a picture, every second counts. So here we've got the camera application, which has been redesigned by HTC. And what we can do here is a variety of things. We can switch to video mode or to camera mode. And of course, in video mode, we can change the resolution to full 720p, or we can go all the way down to, you know, MMS uh, video, which is very low resolution and very low quality. And there's other settings here too. We can change the white balance, record with audio, shutter sound. That are, those are the settings for video, but for the camera, we've got image adjustment, white balance, resolution. We can go all the way up to eight megapixels. Really curious to see how pictures turn out here. Be sure to check the full review on Pocket Now. Review duration, uh, widescreen, whether you want it to be widescreen or five by three aspect ratio, face detection. I mean, they've got a lot of features here. Then after you take the picture, they've got some cool stuff. Let me take a picture. Okay, here's a picture of the HTC Inspire 4G manual, maybe not the most amazing thing in the world. So we can pull that up. We should get some, uh, some options here. So this is the new sort of gallery settings. So from here we can share to a variety of services. We can press the little magic wand and we can do a lot of editing. So we can go to effects. And this is kind of cool. It shows you a little preview of what you can make it look like. Sepia, high contrast. So you get some, uh, you know, photo editing tools above and beyond what you typically get on your usual Android phone, which is quite nice. So let's say we like antique. That's sort of cool. Let's press save, saving photo. Now it's ready for your consumption. You can email it or whatnot. So pretty cool enhancement to uh, the, the camera application here, and it opens up quite fast. So that's it for the software review of the HTC Inspire 4G. This turned out to be a long video because there's just so much to talk about. HTC has impacted nearly every program that comes on this phone. Uh, again, for better or for worse, depending on whether you like what HTC does, but you gotta hand it to them that they spent a long time customizing this phone and really making the experience consistent, pleasing. Uh, there's a lot of eye candy, a lot of added functionality uh, than what you get on a stock Android phone. So in terms of software, we're gonna give the HTC Inspire a thumbs up because it packs a lot of good stuff that a lot of people are going to find useful. We're gonna dive into software even more in the upcoming review on pocketnow.com. Be sure to check that out and please give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and that's it for now.